All right, on this video, um, <coughs> I'm going to show you how to start the software, how to uh, do some things on the screen. So I'll try to stay out of the way here as much as possible so you can see the screen. First thing we want to do is double click on GeoMet. Okay, now it says to move it in home position, which is front, right, top. So you can't see this now, but I'm moving the machine to the front, right, top. And I'm going to hold it there as I set the home button. Now, after I set the home button, it's going to ask me some questions. Uh, if I have a drawing number, so we can call this um, Project um, 17. This is Lab Exercise 17. And the parts that I'm going to measure, actually, this would be 18, I'm sorry. 18. The part that I'm going to measure is part number 3. And they're all stamped. You would put your name right here, such as Bob Smith, whatever your name may be. Uh, the date will appear, the time will appear, and if you want any notes down here, such as the way it, the part is positioned in the machine, you can put them down there. Uh, once that looks okay, you can say accept. Now it has a whole bunch of probes in here, but I'm going to go ahead and get rid of most of these, because we don't need them. Uh, we'll just delete these. Okay, we want to get rid of those. Remove all, make it easier. There we go. Okay, now what we're going to do is hit the next button. Okay, we are going to use a ball as our um, calibration sphere. And we're going to hit next. And it wants me to take five hits on the calibration sphere. Just so we can um, get the size of the probe. It knows that the ball is exactly one inch. So what it's looking for is the probe size, or the stylus size. Okay, there we go. And it looks like it's 117 thousandths and 7 tenths. So once we highlight that, if we're happy with that, we can just set active. And so now the machine knows which stylus we have. Okay. So what I want to see on the screen, I'm going to click on the little eyeball here. And I'm going to click on, let's see, uh, stylus. Well, we want to see the stylus. And there it is right there. Okay. So we're going to do a part uh, coordinate system. Uh, and we can click on this fifth icon down and we can move this around. What this is now is the machine coordinate system. It knows where the machine is at, but you notice the flashing axis origin down here. The PCS setup is not complete. Okay. So the first thing we want to do, we're going to click on measure a plane or we could hit the hot key B and then we're going to push the Z negative because we're going in the down position. Okay, so now I'm going to hit the top of my part, which you can't see that, but I want you to see the screen right now. I'm going to hit four points right on top of my part. Okay, right there. And once I do that, then um, I'm ready to I see my, the picture of my plane on the screen and I can use my roll button to uh, move everything around and see what's going on there. But what I want to do is hit the letters J and L on my keyboard. That is Orient and Origin. J and L. And you notice that the Z axis and origin have gone away because they're already set. See, it says Z origin set. Now what I want to do is measure a line. I want I'm going to measure a line, hot button, hot button. Uh, well, which one is it? Uh, for line, it is M. So I'm going to be going in this direction, M X positive. I'm going to hit it from this side here. And you can actually maybe see that. But I'm going to hit two points on the side of my part. And that's going to tell me where this line is at. Because this is called a plane line point part coordinate system. And I want XY. XY is looking at my part from the top. That's what I want. I want to be looking at my part from the top. So I'm going to hit the XY plane. Okay, so there's my line. You see the little white line. And now I'm going to hit K and L. And you notice that my origin is getting closer, my part coordinate system. You notice down here my X origin is now set. Now all I have to do is set the Y and we're ready to go. So I'm going to go measure a point. And I'm going to hit the front of my part now because I want my 
my uh, X, Y, and Z going in that direction. My front left corner is going to be my origin, just like when we set it up in a CNC machine. So I want Y positive. That's going to be hitting the part from the front. So I'm going to take one hit off the front of the part. There we go. And you see the little button there. So now I'm going to hit the L button, origin. PCS1 is now established. Okay, so you see everything we just did. And if I look at it from the top, I can actually see, let's flip it around like this. My red is my X, green is Y, blue is my Z. There's my part. So I just established my part coordinate system. The machine didn't know where my part was before. It knew the machine coordinate system, but it did not know the part coordinate system. So now this PCS is now set. Uh, it's going to be set just like this. So now if I want to measure a hole, if I want to measure anything else, it uh, should be no problem. So I can go to measure uh, circle, which is shortcut Z, ID, and I'm going to take four points off the center hole here. So just so you can see where the center hole is going to be. Okay, there's the center hole right there. Okay, now it gave me the coordinates and that it actually came up with, but I want to modify those because I need some tolerances. So what I do is I highlight the line I want to edit, right click, and then I'm going to go edit tolerance. So this hole is actually supposed to be 750. Uh, the distance here is 1.500 from the X side. <coughs> Sorry, should be 1.500 from the other side. So you can see our part is quite off uh, specifications, and that's what this does. It shows me that the size of the hole, plus or minus five thousandths, um, which um, okay. you can see, plus or minus five. I'm well within. I'm one thousandths away on the high side. It goes plus. Uh, I'm 44 and a half thousandths away on the X. 43 thousandths and nine tenths away on the Y. So. The location is really not good on this part, but the size of the hole is good. So these parts are not exactly what they're supposed to be, but that's exactly what we want to see. Okay, so you can see the hole there that we just measured. There's the hole in the middle. And so let's measure one more thing. Maybe we can measure the, the width of the part. So what I, the way I would want to do that is to hit a point on the right side. So I can measure a point on the right side, x negative, and I'll show you how to edit that as well. Okay, now we just took a hit right there. You can see the hit right there. We measured the line on this side. Now we just took one point on this side so we can get the width of the part. Now if we were worried about parallelism, we would actually measure a line there, but I'm not concerned about that now. I have this point, so I want to click on it, right click, and I'm going to say feature properties. And right here at this point, I'm going to put in um, width of the uh, part. And I'll hit apply, OK. And you notice now the width of the part, X is 2.901. The actual part should be 3 inches, so that's where we're getting a lot of um, variation. So I have the center circle size, location X and Y, have the width of the part, and let's get the, the, the thickness of the part. So what I'm going to do now is measure the table. So I have the top of the part, now I'm going to measure the table going down right beside it, and I'll hit one point, and this is going to be a negative number because the top of my part is zero, so I'm going backwards. So I can left click this, right click it, feature properties, change it to uh, thickness of part or workpiece thickness, however you want to say it. So now this is my report. Now I have this first circle identified, size and location. I have the width of the part and I have uh, the thickness of the part. So I can also get the um, length of the part if I wanted to get the length and I would continue on with the other hose. There are actually one more one, two, three, four more holes. Okay, so this is basically how we're going to set up our program. You can see that it's Project 18, part name, my name, date, machine. And the way I would save this is go to File, 
save as, and uh, I'm going to be looking backwards just once. Student folders, see the CMM 118? What you'll do, you'll click on that. You'll save it as lab 17 under the folder, lab 17. Save it as 17. And then I can come back and look to make sure everything looks okay. Also, I could print out a report if I'm ready to print out a report. Print. So now it's going to print out a report. It's going to show all of this on the report. And uh, if I were to print with detail, it would show the part picture as well. Okay, so I'll be making a couple more videos on the CMM because it's a pretty uh, complex machine to program and operate. Thank you very much.